Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the content that we have coming out. And today we are going to be diving into Kara Zor-El, aka Superwoman. This is all part of the Future State line. If you haven't been keeping up with Future State, go ahead and check out the description. I have a link for you to a playlist as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything Future State related. This is the event that's going to be taking over for the next foreseeable future until the beginning of March. So be sure to get caught up on it. We're covering every single issue of Future State. And honestly, I have to say, I, I really do enjoy this issue. It picks us up in the, the far future, if you will, on the moon colony. And it's nice to have a, a story that's completely separate from what's going on with Earth. Now, with that being said, let's dive into this issue. So diving in this one, like I said, we pick up on the moon colony years from now. And we have Superwoman, which is a, a very well-deserved, final, finally well-deserved title. You know, she's been Supergirl for so long. It's nice to finally see her actually get the mantle that she deserves, which is Superwoman. But she's standing over the grave of Crypto. And it seems that Crypto has finally passed away after all of these years. And she's reminiscing about all the lessons that she learned from Crypto the Superdog. How he accepted her as she already was. And she left for the colony on the moon some time ago. A place where the displaced of Earth can have a, a safe haven. And all of this is an attempt for her to try to be the best Kryptonian she can. The, she tries to be the best of all of them. Of Clark, of John, of her. The best Kryptonian she should have been a long time ago. She tried to tend to the, to the moon colony like a garden. Using what she's learned. Helping others. She's really living just a, a, a kumbaya type lifestyle now where she's just trying to be kind, respect others, and not resort to violence. And trying to gain as much wisdom as she can. And this is when a spaceship comes crashing in through the shield wall. And Superwoman flies over and sees a newcomer, a child of sorts, who sends Superwoman flying. And we see this child transform into some kind of dragon. And Superwoman goes to stop the kid and just is like, hold on, like, I can't let you loose on the colony. I don't know if you mean this harm or what's going on. And this is where Superwoman uses her heat vision and this dragon literally just eats it. Not only eats it, but now this individual is empowered and stole Superwoman's ability. But this is where Superwoman pulls out her plan B with a quantum detonator. Pretty much like either this stops or I end us all right now. And then the child gets off of her and starts asking about the moon colony and if it's a place for refuges to come and seek safe haven. And so though this was off to a real rocky start, we see some kind of friendship blooming here. And Superwoman introduces herself and we find out that this child's name is Lenari of the Star Swamp Asteroid. And she's some kind of royalty, but she ran away. After she was given the power of her people, the Starfell Jewel, and it embodies her with all the abilities that she has to absorb other people's powers and things of that nature, but she ran away with it. And so she's being tracked down by all of her people, and they know exactly where her signature is picking up at. And so they're on their way to annihilate her and anybody that is harboring her. And this is where we pick up three days later. And these two have been, you know, really getting to know each other, finding more out about all their powers and abilities and so on and so forth. And we learn a little history that their that her her dynasties clashed over just the richest rich. They went to war against one another over everything. They fought for generations over this jewel, which infused the bearer with incredible powers. Everything to them is about serving their family. Now her father had found the jewel, and because only one could carry it, only one could bear that power, the shape-shifting, the ability to take from others. With his dying breath, he gave the power they, they had fought over for centuries. And now, the ancestral enemies, they're coming for her, and what's inside of her head. But Superwoman isn't fretting too much on that aspect. She's really trying to help this, this girl learn her powers and what she can do. And we see her put together the dam that, that helps irrigate parts of the moon so that it can harvest and things of that nature. And as these two fly through the sky, we see Lenari start to be very cruel to Superwoman. Just telling her, you know, if you had any kind of family, any kind of real family, you wouldn't content yourself with shutting yourself off in a glass coffin, stuck here sad and miserable. But, but Superwoman can tell that she's just lashing out. 
and we see her hit Superwoman. And we she actually makes Superwoman bleed. And this is where she freaks out, says that she's nothing, she's just a thief, a liar, a runaway, and she goes and takes off. But Superwoman's not having it. Like, she knows that Crypto wouldn't run away from this situation, wouldn't let her run away from this situation. And so Superwoman goes chasing after her, only to see her captured by her kinfolk. And with this, Superwoman tries to hold on to the peace that she found. She's trying not to let it go. And with that, she apologizes to Crypto for what she's about to do. And we see her blast her heat vision. Alright guys, so we're picking up with issue number two. And we last left off, the moon colony built around Superwoman's Fortress of Solitude is under, under siege by shape-shifting aliens that have come to take this place in search of Lanari, a refugee from their homeworld. Now, Lanari's aunt tells Superwoman that she's going to stand down, and they let her know that they can tell that she's rusty, and that she's out here because she only has a small grasp of what the truth is. And they tell her Lanari is a murderer that scorched out her own family. And then they go into the story, how they come from a folk called the Linth, or Linthi, on the Star Swamp asteroid. And Lenore's side of the family took to the sea, while the other side took to the sky. Eons ago, the family split over control of the Starfell Jewel, the gem that would make one of them a god among the others. And them knowing this individual not to be a god, but just empowered with the abilities of a god, war broke out. A family feud that would last the eons, as they tore every little scrap of that asteroid apart, hunting for the jewel, passing it hand to hand, killing each other over who would inherit it. And her brother, Lenari's father, dug the jewel up from the muck, and it became a part of him. But only one can hold the Starfell jewel. For the one who bears it, the previous bearer has to die. And he knew Lenari was outnumbered. He knew that they were coming. So he tore the jewel right out of his own heart. Killing himself all so Lenari can inherit the jewel. And so they hold Lenari responsible for the death. Because if she were stronger or a better child, they wouldn't have needed the protection. And so in their eyes, this is murder. And this is where Wonder Woman has heard enough. And she says Lunari is under her protection. But this is when they pull out a plan B. Like sure, you could fight us, Superwoman. But we have a quantum detonator. So you're gonna do as we say. Or we will blow this whole moon to smithereens. And use Lunari's hide to protect ourselves. And she calls it a bluff. But they say we aren't bluffing. And it explodes. And we see fire surrounding them. And Superwoman jumps into action. And she's worried. Because all the people she has helped and saved. To see everything that they've built threatened now. It terrifies her. But she's going to stop it. And she fights these things. These shape-shifting creatures. And we see her go Full freaking Kryptonian on them. But this is when Lenari comes up and lets her know that she's not going to let this happen. She's not going to let anybody or anything lose their life or see this place destroyed simply because of her. And so she uses the power of the jewel and rises herself to the sky and grabs on to her kinfolk and lets them know, here is your choice, which you never gave me. What do you want? And it can't be about me. They say I that they don't want to be afraid anymore. They don't want to be afraid that they're going to be hunted down and killed. But they don't want to be afraid anymore. And she lets them know that if she forswears her family, forswears the, the Star Swamp asteroid and the old Familia feuds and all the blood debts that go with them, will they leave her in peace? And while two of them agree, her aunt says never. And so she says, then you won't die by your choice you will live by it. We will all live. And she uses the power of the jewel to free them all. She took the power from Wonder Woman, became stronger than she ever had been before. She took the abilities away from her aunt and the rest of her family, and to include herself, burned it all up like rage. There's nothing left. There's no more Starfall Jewel. And so they're going to stay here on the moon with Kara. And she's going to teach her about the cities, about flowers and dogs and people. And you're going to learn to stop inheriting nothing but power 
and rage and blood and violence and you're gonna learn to build something and though it took longer than they thought for Superwoman's powers to come back they eventually did and after that people were kinder to her especially when they accepted her cousins on earth without any kind of sacrifice like this without losing their powers and they will always remember one phrase she said no one is born wise but if they're lucky in time they get there and people heard far and wide what happened they heard about the cousins that came back adrift without someone to guide them some of them had darkness down in their minds down in their memories they wanted what superwoman had offered so people came and it grew and it grew and it grew and eventually over time wonder woman aged and now that once fortress of solitude is brimming with life generations have come we see the love and change she made in the worlds of many worlds this place and these people that Kara taught and cared for raised and cherished they still thrive in their eternal garden and this is where we see the grave of superwoman and crypto and that will be the end of this issue and this will be closing out superwoman as a whole so let me know what you guys think down in the comments personally i think it's a really really nice closeout for superwoman now i'm sure she had plenty of more adventures in between these times and many more threats that they had to face but superwoman really did build a world for the outcasts for the nobodies for the people that were shunned by society or left adrift lost in a world they didn't feel like they belonged to this was the the place for them so all starting as a moon colony and the fortress of solitude slowly building over generations and generations becoming a place that literally has a booming population and everybody is taking care of one of another one another so all in all i have to say it was a really really good issue i i liked it i, I would like to see a lot more of superwoman's adventures in between this time and hopefully we're gonna get that with what's coming from dc comics here in the near future but yeah if you guys have not yet please do me a favor subscribe to the channel like this video check out my patreon if you have not already tons of of exclusives for patreon members only check out our podcast comic breakdown and more podcasts available wherever you get your podcasts new episodes every friday covering everything we cover here on the channel to Wonder Woman 84, to WandaVision, and so much more. And with that being said, until the next video.